lot of people have got, when I say a lot of people, a, a decent percentage of people have got negative connotation towards recruitment consultants or recruitment agencies in the sense they view them to be transactional. And yeah. in a sense, yeah, unfortunately, and, and it makes and, and people... And don't get me wrong. Great it, recruits it, like it, you. Yeah. It, it comes from an industry that was swamped probably 10, 15 years ago, mm. 20 years ago, mm. right when I started, but not no correlation, Yeah, um, but swamped with um, exactly that methodology. Yeah. You know, you didn't have to have a degree to get into recruitment and you could make a lot of money. Mm. What that breeds is mm. a whole bunch of people in there going um, and, and became this, this whole piece of the shotgun approach, okay? And the shotgun approach was you find a CV, you think that person's good, you send it to every single person you can think of, hoping that one of them sticks. Got it. Okay? The scattergun. Yeah, and yeah, the scattergun yeah, yeah, yeah. approach. The shotgun approach. Yeah, yeah. Those days are over, and they've been over for a while. Yes. You, you, you can't be successful if you're ever yes. like that. But there's still that connotation, okay? Mm. Mm. And to some extent, some of those people still exist, but they've had to adapt themselves as well, mm. okay, within this, mm. within this so, market. So thank you for that intro. Seriously, I, mm. I do mean it. And so to follow through from my question, um, negative connotations uh, because they view consultants or recruitment you know, businesses to be transactional. Mm-hmm. Once someone signed the contract, we're done, they move on, they don't care. And to go back to our point, uh, the linkage from recruitment to the so-called onboarding mm-hmm. is important. So now if you can zoom on what your business do, in particular about that because as I can understand you're not going to get paid for that once you've really the contract is signed uh, you know why would you care and what do you guys do well, above it, it, your really, it really it really it really it really depends because the realities are a lot of people that we kind of deal with in our organization are contractors so they're actually still we're constantly in contact with them afterwards That's true. making sure that they're doing That's the right thing That's true. and they're actually employed by us a lot of the time That's and true. maybe on hire them so maybe we're not talking about but, those okay, maybe we're talking about the permanent placements yeah, or the permanent permanent placement, when, yeah. when you make a permanent placement with yeah. an organization yeah. Yeah. if you make a permanent placement in an organization yeah. and you're not doing follow ups there's a very good chance that person will get disengaged okay because if i if i if so i'm a recruiter if I put somebody into an organization, I've developed a relationship with that candidate. Sure. I've developed a relationship sure. with that potential sure. employee. I've sure. developed a relationship with the client why as well. Why would you care? Because I and I'm matching those on. two people together. Okay. Yeah, but why would you care beyond the signing of the contract? Is it because you care? Is it is it contractual contract in the contract that you If they I have want to that stay person to be successful or? and I want to continue my business yeah. with that client, with that potential candidate, think about it. That candidate, I put them in at this level. Yeah. In no time at all, they're at that level and a potential client, okay? Got it. Now, that's not the only reason we do it. Sure. Because we like to develop relationships with our candidates and we have actually quite amazing relationships with a lot of our people that we've placed into, into organisations mm-hmm. because the world is too small not to develop that and not to make sure people are yes. feeling supported. Yes. Also, yeah. if you just kind of wipe your hands with it, and a yeah. lot of recruiters did this for many yeah. years, yeah. wipe your hands with it and walk that's away. That's the point I'm talking Okay? Yep. Yeah. Who do they have to go to if they're all of a sudden in this organization and they're not enjoying themselves or something's not going right? Okay. If they fall off, then you've lost that client, you've lost that candidate, everyone's pissed off. Okay. You need to be able to have that relationship that if they're sitting there in there going, this is not really what was sold to me, and you and that candidate calls you as a recruiter, you have to have the the gumption and the thing to call that client and go, hold on a second. You told me that this is what was going to happen. This is what I sold to this candidate. Mm. They're not feeling it. Mm. Okay. What are we going to do to change that? So what do you do? I got it. Thank you. That was. Oh, and don't get me wrong. We we have we have follow up calls that we that we we, we always do with our clients. Yeah. We have constant check ins with our candidates but once the, they've started. But the linkage into the onboarding. How do you how do you make that? For example, you know, you spoke before about. Um, uh, you know, for example, do you set up that first meeting with the client or with the manager where maybe you're involved to make that transition? Oh, obviously, as a obviously we've, we've, How do you we've, make that transition? We've set up all the interviews. We've gone through that piece. Yeah. We've, you know, we've often had conversations around, you know, um, helping with the start dates and what that's going to look like on the start date. Where are they going to turn up? How are they going to mm. feel? Mm. Um, if we have good relationships with our clients, which we do a lot of the time, we'll yeah. also give them advice on, you know, what is the right way to onboard somebody, what is the right way to do this. We could even talk, you know, bring our talent solutions business in that will actually go in there and help them design an onboarding process. Okay. A lot of the organizations that we deal with already have an onboarding process, so it's making sure that it aligns with what we what the candidate can feel going through that piece, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. So 100%. 
we get involved in the onboarding of those people because until they turn up on day one, they are still mm. our clients by no means. Mm. And then what we do in terms of checking on afterwards is to make sure that what we have sold or what we have um, or, or the match that we have made between the client and the candidate mm. is successful as it can be. Mm. It comes back to that EVP as well, which is why the two t- so intertwined. The, it, it, the it, all, it all intertwines. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting, very interesting, very, very interesting. I like the way you described why it's important for you to make sure that candidate succeeds. Mm-hmm. The fact that, you know, you've got almost two clients here, the candidate is a client, a potential client, and the client that just paid you and you want to make do, do more oh, business with them. So, so it is a big, you've got a lot to lose and a lot to gain from that if you're a company that's wise enough and smart enough to play the long game, isn't it? But, but we, always, we, short, all, we always view... Game, both our candidates and our clients as our clients. Yeah. Okay, yes, we have to differentiate them, so we call them different names. Sure. But that if anything, in the market that we're living in today, hmm. our candidates are more our clients than our clients. Speak to that. Why is that? We are in a massively short candidate market at the moment, mm-hmm. okay, because of what's happened with COVID, mm-hmm. what's happened with everything. Sure. We do not have enough people to do the jobs that we're working in at the moment, mm-hmm. okay? Everybody is screaming for talent, Okay. Absolutely screaming. And there's not enough talent out there to be Mm. able to do it. Mm. So what that means is, as an organisation such as ours, we have to be able to find the right people in the first place because they're hard to find. Mm. So we have to, you know, obviously use all of our experiences to be able to source and find these people. We we have a, you know, within our organisation, we have a a, a resourcing centre, a national resourcing centre, where all they do is go out there and try and find the best quality talent and engage with the best quality talent that's out there, okay? So we have something to be able to take to our clients and go, okay, I know you're struggling to find people here. This is what we can do to help you. (coughs) Mm. Um, We... So we have that national resourcing centre set up currently at the moment, okay? Mm. But what we need to do in terms of um, realising that candidates these days are really, really hard to find. Every single internal function struggling to find them, every single um, uh, uh, every single business is struggling to find talent at the moment. Yeah. Okay? No matter how good your EVP is, no matter how positive it is. Especially in New South Wales. All around Australia. Sure. Because we don't have the amount of immigration that we had coming in yeah. for so yeah. many years. So we are well behind what we need in yeah. this country to be able to actually fill all the roles that yeah. we need. Have, you know, have the unemployment there. rate in New South Wales is the lowest in something like 30, 40 years, definitely the worst in Australia. In terms 100%. Of the, yeah. 100%. Yeah. But that's because we have the most roles as well and, and because we have this um, amazing, yeah. um, we have this real struggle with finding quality especially tech talent. Tech talent at the moment is one of the hardest things to yeah. find, yeah. okay, which is why agencies such as myself are quite successful at the moment because we have different ways of finding people mm. that internal teams mm. um, and, um, and and our organisations on a whole don't necessarily mm. have that because mm. we just invest heavily into that area of our organisation. Do you, do you find, do you think... Would you describe yourself as competing with the HR departments or do you feel that even with the HR departments that have their own internal team, you can mm-hmm. still be their partner, work with oh, them on roles that hard to find? I, I would say, always have that I would say model. 80 or 90% of our clients have internal departments. Wow, that percentage. 100%. So you and I, we're not enemies because I sell recruitment systems to... Um, it is, it is an ecosystem. So we work together. It is an ecosystem. Okay, at the we're, f- we're is, friends then. You know, hundred. <laughs> right. I don't know about friends, but no, I'm just <laughs> um, but but it is an ecosystem. And what I mean by an ecosystem is the way of. So I, I I run I run ABC printers. Okay, I need to find talent. I need to do every single thing I can do to find talent. I can have an internal team that might be out there going to try and find that. I will engage with an agency that might have different ways of going to market and trying to find people as well. Those people could be working together to try and find talent. Together? 100%. Can you share? We we, we deal with internal recruitment teams all the time, 100%. How how can they work together? So, so for instance, I'm I'm John Smith. I work in ABC Printers, Mm. okay? I am the internal recruiter. Yeah, yeah. All right? I am one person and I've got 40 roles on. How am I dealing with that? Not great, okay? Because having an internal team Mm. also means that it's very hard to scale with what business needs are. So so, so ABC printers might need 40 people now and then next week they might need two. 
So you're going to hire potentially for that person to be... They, when, they, when it's two, it's fine. They can handle those two roles. But when those 40 people need are needed, okay, Not very or efficient. people are moving as much or the great resignation sure. or the great whatever it is or the, the great application, as I like to call it, got it, got it. Um, is a lot of people out there right now jumping ship and moving around. Got okay? it. So internal teams can only handle so much. And there was a huge lack of internal recruiters in Australia at the mm. moment. Mm. Huge amount. Mm. There's a huge lack of internal, uh, sorry, agency recruiters at the moment. Okay. Mm. Again, because every business is suffering at the moment in terms of not being able to find talent. Mm. When that happens, you will go to market in any which way you can to try and find that person to help yeah. you run your business or help yeah. you deal with your business or help you promote your business or whatever mm. it looks like or sell so you your business. provide that flexibility 100%. to balance when they need the help to come in very quickly and help them and then you're out again mm-hmm. and when they need you to come back as opposed to hiring extra resources that you're not going to need. But, but also, I, I'm an internal recruiter for ABC Printers. I might realise I'm really good at, at recruiting um, certain program roles. managers or, you know, um, operations managers and this, but, you know, when it comes to sales, I don't, I don't, know, I don't have any networks. I don't have any conversations. Mm. Recruitment agencies that are successful... S- are built up Specialized. around specialization. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mate, I'll, I'll have a recruiter in my team that only does cybersecurity roles, knows every single person that is in cybersecurity in Australia and just recruits in cybersecurity. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. when an organization needs a cybersecurity person, yeah. are they going to go to this internal recruiter that often has to deal with every different role within the business? Or even if you've got a big internal team, they're having to deal, they have to be mm. the, the master of all rather yeah. than a specialist of one. Okay, so sometimes for those really specialised roles, you will go to a recruiter that knows cybersecurity and you sit there and go, oh, look, I need this cybersecurity manager. And they'll go, oh, what, John, Sarah or Betty, who are you looking for? And know three people that you need to be able to go yep. and have a conversation with. Yeah, I get okay? it. Makes perfect sense. So there has to be that ecosystem in any organisation. Yeah. Just the way you explain this game, man, it just goes to show how much you know the space. Just really, really impressive. And it's such a fascinating It's like space. a mafia. Once you get into it, you can't get out. <laughs> really fascinating. You know, I've come to that space with any knowledge, no knowledge to it. It just mm-hmm. came from the tech environment. Mm-hmm. I was able to listen to people in that in your space, in your world, listen to, to them about describing the problem, and I was good at finding a solution that is so generic that any agency in any industry in anywhere in the world can customise it to make that street of my strength. Mm-hmm. And so talking to people like yourself and to my clients and a lot of these, um, you know, head of talents and HR managers, it's just fascinating. It's still fascinating for me. Every, it's still every fascinating day. for me. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've met I've met certain heads of talent, um, ta- heads of talent acquisition, throughout my career, that even, you know, when I was head of TA for IBM, there were certain people that I've met in this industry that even to this day, and I've been in this industry for a while now, I sat there and went, I love the way that they think. I love the way that their mind works. I love the way that they're, yeah. that they, that they, um, that they um, problem solve within this yeah. industry and how they think outside of the yeah. square. Because our industry is built around how to think outside the square, mm. how to find talent in a way that nobody else can find talent so you can give your client or your internal team an advantage over finding the best people for your business mm. and as such build the best business that you can mm. actually have. Because, mm. again, without good people, your business is what's well, shit. What's so. interesting about it is the more any of the, any industry that you guys work with, the more that industry gets um, competitive the more you start to add more value because the layers of knowing that space and knowing the, the specializations and the expertise mm-hmm. becomes more and more complex, more Completely. layers are added, and that's where you guys come in as a specialist recruiter in that space. 100%. It's so fascinating. Yeah. You know? so, so, again, three departments within Ignite, as an example, you know, you've got the talent solutions business that go in there and do the, almost the consulting work, but, you know, can build programs or build talent solutions for your organisation. Mm. You know, the on-demand business, which is the managed services business. Mm. Um, and then you've got specialist recruitment. We call it specialist recruitment for a reason because 
the people within those businesses are specialized in their areas. They're yeah. not generic recruiters by any yeah. means. Yeah. They come in there and they know their markets back to front. They know the players mm. of their markets. They know who's here. Mm. They often know who's moving, moving from here to here mm. to here to here. Oh, you know, John over here works really well with Sarah over there. You know what I mean? If we got Sarah, could we be able to get John? Could we be able to do this and build a team within this organization? Yeah. They know all of those players. Yeah.